At this point, we're ready to go ahead and test the application. And like I mentioned before, we only had to define these beams so that we can have access to the documentation or at least to see something uh, whenever we try to access the Swagger UI. And there's two more configuration that I'm going to add here that I'm going to show you that you usually don't see. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to put in two more configuration if you want more customization. But at this point, um, we're ready to test this. So I'm going to go ahead and start the application or restart it. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look in the browser. So I'm going to click up here and then stop and rerun and let the application come up. And the application is up. As you can see here, we're, we're running on port 8081. So I'm going to bring up the browser and then we're going to try to access the Swagger UI. Now we're not going to access anything in the controller. So if you go back here and if we go into the resource, so we're not going to try to access anything in the resource um, uh, because that's not what we're testing. We're testing to see that if we have uh, Swagger configured properly in our application. Now, it's a good sign that we didn't see any errors here, so everything looks good. So let's go ahead and check it in the browser and see what we have. So I'm just going to open my browser here and we need to go to localhost port 8081, if you remember. And then to access the Swagger UI, you have to go to Swagger dash UI and then we have to go to index.html. So this is the URL that you need to put in to access the Swagger UI. So whatever the um, server is and then forward slash Swagger dash UI forward slash index.html. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you can see that we have our Swagger documentation page coming up. So everything you see here on top here is everything that's coming from the constant. So all the content that we created, the version and everything else. And below here, we can see that we have the tag that we put in uh, and then we have the actual uh, invoice resource here. But that's not supposed to be that way. And I'm going to show you what's what's going on here. Uh, if we click here, we can see all the methods that we have in that uh, invoice resource. Uh, but all of those are supposed to be under this invoice uh, service for this API because that's the tag that we define. And the reason we have two of them is because we have to match each tag to a specific controller. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So if we go back here and we go back to the configuration, we we'll define this tag here. So let's take a look, which is the invoice service, which is what we're seeing here. Invoice service and then all APIs relating to invoice, which is what we said in the configuration, which is right here. Okay, so here's the tag or the title and then a little bit of description. So for this tag to be applied to a specific resource, we just have to put that tag with the same name on that resource. So let's go into the resource since we're adding it here. And all we have to do is to do add API. And then here we can pass in the tag. So we can do tags and set this equal to an array. And we only have one tag, so we can pass in just one. But just so you know, it takes an array. And then here we can call in our constant. So we can do swagger constant and then pass in the API tag. Okay, so we're just passing in uh, the same string that we have here because it's looking at the string to determine which API will have this tag on it. So let's just import this API real quick, import class. So now we have this tag on that specific invoice resource. So what it's going to do is it's going to get rid of this default and then it's going to put it under this. So that's one way that we have to configure um, this tag here or the name and the description for that particular class or for that particular API. So let's go ahead and restart uh, one more time and we're going to take a look. Okay, the application is coming up. All right, the application is up. So let's go ahead and refresh our page and take a look. So if I refresh, you can see now everything is under invoice service, all APIs relating to invoices. And now you can see everything is down below. So the API key that we define in the configuration, which is, I'm going to collapse this real quick. So if we go back to the configuration, you can see that we'll define this API key here, and then we're telling it it's going to be an authorization type. So it's going to go into the authorization and it's a header type. Okay. So that's what we're defining here. And this is what this is button is, is here for. So if we click on it, you can see we define the token access, which is the API key. And it's telling the user, hey, this is going to be in the authorization header and it's going to be your header and the value is going to be here. So whatever you put here, it's going to put it in the header as an authorization header. And this is what this whole 
API key is doing here. So again, um, we're going to go over this in more detail, but uh, this is proof that our configuration is running. So I'll see you guys in the next one.